Yes, this is a mushroom. Welcome to Crocs in the Kitchen. I am Brian. Jessica will be back later for the taste test of this amazing recipe. So today I am turning this absolutely gorgeous lion's mane mushroom into the recipe that we are calling not so crabby cakes. Now, this is absolutely the most expensive dish that I have ever made on this channel. I believe we spent about $20 total for 20 something dollars total for this amount of lion's mane mushroom and it is worth every penny. Now this is not an everyday kind of food. This is not something that we're just going to be eating all the time. This is a rare occasion kind of deal. This is an anniversary, a birthday kind of meal. Something super fancy uh, just for, you know, a small group of loved ones or something along, or you can just eat them all yourself. That's perfectly fine too. But never fear. If you can't find mushrooms like this around where you are, we do have a much cheaper option that will work pretty darn well as well. So stay tuned for that little tip. But let's start making not so crabby cakes. For this recipe, you will need approximately one pound of lion's mane mushrooms. Now, you may be asking yourself, hey Brian, where do I find lion's mane mushrooms? Well, we actually purchased them from a place in St. Louis called VL's Urban Farms. They are a great, great grocery store to get mushrooms as well as some other fruits and vegetables that are grown locally. But unfortunately, they don't ship mushrooms out to uh, anywhere. So you have to go to the store to actually buy them. But what they do actually ship out are grow kits. Now these grow kits do vary seasonally, so you'll have to check out the website to see if they actually have Lion's Mane grow kits at the moment you listen to this. But check it out anyway, just because their mushrooms are absolutely amazing. Now let's get back to the main star of this recipe. The Lion's Mane mushroom is very easy to pull apart, and in fact, that's what you really wanna do for this recipe. You wanna pull them apart into small bite-sized pieces we did actually try doing this in a food processor and it just completely obliterated the mushrooms. So this is much better to do by hand. So if you want though, get yourself a partner and they can help you just rip these little things apart into small pieces. Also, you may be wondering if you have to clean these mushrooms. The mushrooms that we buy, uh, they're basically grown in sawdust and they are very easy to clean. You just want to make sure that there's no little bits of sawdust on your mushrooms. You can cut off little bits if they're stuck to it. But for the most part, lion's mane mushrooms are super easy. You do not need to wash them. Once you've got your mushrooms all picked apart into small little bite-sized pieces, heat up a large skillet to medium-high heat. And while you're at it, you might want to set your oven to preheat to 375 or you can also just use an air fryer at the end of this. It's entirely your choice. Go ahead and add in the lion's mane mushrooms to the skillet and just keep stirring until they start to release their liquid. If they're not releasing it fast enough or you've got your skillet a little too high, they might start to stick. You may wanna to toss in just a little bit of water to sort of get them off the bottom, but keep them moving for now and they will eventually start to release their liquid. Once they've cooked down, gotten a little bit of color and have released a lot of their liquid, go ahead and turn off the heat and let these cool. While these are cooling, we can get everything else for this recipe together. Now it is time to create the liquid that binds all of this together. The first thing you will need is a quarter cup of raw unsalted pumpkin seeds, which measures out to 30 grams. Thank you, Jessica, for finding that conversion. You will also need a quarter cup of water. Nothing fancy about the water, just straightforward water. You will also need one tablespoon of lemon juice. If you can get freshly squeezed lemon juice, go ahead and use that. If you can't, then you can go ahead and get the stuff that's found in a little bottle or a jar. You'll also need one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce. That's a hard word to say sometimes. 
Worcestershire sauce. Make sure that it is a vegan Worcestershire sauce because they are not all vegan. After that, you will need half a tablespoon of white miso paste. You'll also need half a teaspoon of capers that have been strained from the brine. You can rinse them if you desire. And finally, you will need one teaspoon of Dijon mustard. Good old Dijon mustard. Now on to the blender. We don't need the big blender vessel. We need a small blender vessel. So if you've got something like a Nutribullet or whatever like that, that'll work great here too. But we have these little adapter cups for our Vitamix that work amazingly well. You just gotta screw on the little adapter part and then blitz it and you are good to go. Once you've blended it for 30 seconds, everything should be nice and creamy. You might wanna watch out while opening it up because as you saw there, some stuff flew out. That happens sometimes, it just happens. But look at that, it is nice and creamy and ready to go. Now for our dry ingredient, we will need some breadcrumbs. You can buy breadcrumbs if you want, but we actually just took a couple pieces of Ezekiel bread, toasted them up, and then blitzed them in a food processor, and then you can store them for a good while afterwards as well. You will also need two tablespoons of fresh Italian parsley, finely diced. You'll also need a half teaspoon of reduced sodium Old Bay seasoning. Now, I will say Old Bay is kind of a must in this recipe. It just brings out so much great flavor. And as anybody from the northeastern part of America will tell you, Old Bay is kind of really important. You will also need a half teaspoon of garlic powder. Good old fashioned garlic powder. Makes everything taste better in my opinion. Well, probably not sweets, but in savory dishes it works great. You'll also need a half teaspoon of onion powder. Yeah, because it's onion powder. I think onion powder and garlic powder just go great together anyway. And finally, you will need a dash of cayenne pepper. Cayenne, making the world spicy for a very long time. An ingredient you won't need is peef. You do not need to add peef to this recipe. Okay, now on to that tip, that replacement that we talked about. It's this, artichoke hearts. You can actually buy these frozen. We got these from Whole Foods. They are really good, low in calorie, just all around artichoke hearts are a great thing to add to things like salads and whatnot, but you can completely replace the lion's mane mushrooms if you cannot find those with these. All right, once your mushrooms have completely cooled, you can go ahead and toss them into a tea towel or a cheesecloth or something like that because you will need to squeeze out as much liquid as possible. We have made this before when we didn't squeeze it and they did not turn out as good. So you really want to give these a good, good squeeze and get out as much of that liquid as possible. Also, keep that liquid. That liquid is like pure mushroom flavor. It, it, it's essentially already a mushroom gravy. You can add it on things. It is just, it is so tasty, it's ridiculous. So do not throw that liquid out. I promise it is super, super good. Now it's time to mix everything together. Go ahead and add in your wet ingredients. This will help really bind everything together with those pumpkin seeds that were in there, as well as give it a really, really good flavor. But this is the thing that's gonna hold it all together when you bake these or air fry them. Give that a good stir, and then we will go ahead and add in our dry ingredients. Once those are all in, give it another good stir and just make sure that everything is well incorporated. Now it's time to divvy these up into nice size portions. You can use something like a cookie scoop, like Jessica has right here, 
It works really, really well just for kind of portioning things out, but we are actually going to use a quarter cup measuring cup. But the thing you really wanna do with this is pack it in tight into the measuring cup. You can't just scoop it out and then pour it. It, won't, it will not hold together, but you really need to like shove it into the quarter cup there and then you can just plop it right onto whatever it is that you were using to bake or air fry these. If you don't want to make all of them at once, you can very easily just put these into an airtight container and store them in your refrigerator, or you can actually freeze the mixture and then thaw it out whenever you want to use it at a later date. Now, like I said, we are going to use our beautiful air fryer. This is the Ninja 8-in-1. It is just a great little appliance that we have here. I don't know how I could live my life without this thing. Sometimes you don't wanna turn on a full on oven and heat up the entire house. We just got this little appliance and it even folds up so you can stick it up against the wall and it doesn't take up as much countertop space. This thing's awesome, we love this. We are going to air fry these at 375 for 12 minutes. You may need to back it off, do about 10 minutes depending on your air fryer, but you're really not gonna overcook these at 12. Trust me, they're gonna turn out great. Or you can bake them in an oven at 375 for 15 minutes, but you'll need to flip them after the first 10. Also, if you were ever interested in any of the products that we use on this channel or in these videos, you can find them in the blog post, which is linked in the description below. Once they are done cooking, they should be golden brown and delicious. These are just amazing. Look at this. Look at this beautiful footage here of these not so crabby cakes being pulled apart. Does that not just look amazing? And I guarantee you it tastes as good as it looks. I promise you that. But as good as this looks, I'm pretty sure Jessica can make this look even better. Yes, there you go. Finally presented not so crabby cakes with our delicious dill sauce. You can find the dill sauce, which is linked in the blog post, which is in the description below. But wait, there's more. Jessica wanted to show you that these crab cakes go great with a salad and you can actually use the dill sauce as a salad dressing on top of this. Trust me, we have had this so many times now and every single time it is awesome. But if you wanna try it in a salad, go ahead. It's amazing there too. So there you have it. The most expensive thing that I have ever presented on this channel. Yay! <laughs> Not so crabby cakes. <laughs> but guys, it is worth it. Trust me. Did you see that pull like I it's mean, so good. I don't like mushrooms. So any of you out there who you are don't like, like crab. Oh yeah, I don't even like crab. <laughs> any of you who are out there who are like, oh, like I don't like mushrooms. Trust me. Try these lion mains it, mushrooms. It like, doesn't taste like mushrooms. It doesn't taste like mushrooms. They just have such a good flavor. Like even without being anything added. Yeah. And yeah. So we put together this little presentation because you gotta have a fancy, if you're making something this fancy, like you gotta have a good presentation. So we put together this little presentation for you guys to enjoy. Um, but I'm ready to enjoy some crab cakes. Yeah, choose your crab cake. Mm -hmm. Not so crabby cakes. Oh yeah, not so crabby. Cause they're not crabby. Okay, I'm gonna choose this one. Okay. Here, I'll break it in half and we can. Share. Just like. Yeah, look at that. Just that, like that, the fact that you can do that, replicate that like meat pull. <laughs> mm -mm. Ooh, don't forget to get some of the dill sauce. Mm. Burp, burp. Mm. 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 I'm in heaven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> It's so good, especially with that dill sauce. Mm. I mean, that's ridiculous. Right? I mean, yeah. <laughs> I kind of just want to sit here and like cry. 
<laughs> really? Wow. I don't think I've ever gotten that it's response just, from They're you. just so good. Like, you have to try this at least once in your life. Yeah, it is definitely a rare occasion kind of thing. Unless you do our cheaper swap out for the uh, frozen artichoke hearts. But Which isn't as anywhere near as good, but it's still good. It's still very it's good. It's like good, but this is just like... Yeah, this is next level good. Next level good. But, but the, uh, yeah, the artichoke mm -hmm. hearts, they've got kind of a, a little bit of a different texture to them, a little bit more of a tanginess to them. Uh, you won't they, get that like pull really. Yeah. Like they kind of, they don't stay together quite as well, but it still works. But it yeah, still works great. If you can get your hand on some lion's mane mushrooms, Trust me, check out that VL's website that we were telling you about, VL's Urban Farm. They, mm -hmm. in, locally in St. Louis, they're the ones that grow the giant, giant, giant ones that we get. And they do sell a thing where you can grow your own at home and you can get, get shipped to your house. So check that out. We're not sponsored by them. We are just supporting a really amazing local business in St. Louis that yeah. has been just an amazing provider of these really high quality mushrooms. Yeah, and they are super passionate oh, about yeah. bringing mushrooms to the area and we cannot help but love people like that. So we are yeah. so happy and so uh, just excited to have them in our community that yeah. we can drive to. You need to get them on your podcast yeah. and you also, Definitely need to get one of those grow kits so we can start growing some lion's mane at home and we can make a video about that because that would just be crazy. Yes. But anyway. Yeah. I think that's really about it for this one, right? Yeah. So another little tip here, and I'm sure I've mentioned it before. Put it in the editing later or earlier on. <laughs> Go to the website. Check out the uh, recipe for this one. Uh, and we have the alternative instructions for the artichoke hearts as well down there. But subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Click the bell that is right next to it so you get notified whenever we post a new video. You can also give this video a good old like, thumbs up, and give it a share out to the rest of the world because, you know, maybe you want to show people, hey, look at these things. They're not made with crab. Yeah. Uh, you can find us on social media, Facebook and Instagram. You can message us on there and we will gladly interact with anybody who does so. But I think that's it. That's definitely all I got. We will see you next time on Crocs in the Kitchen. Bye. Bye. Crab cake.